what's going on fam? It's your boy Tamashi, I'm the Visionaire. And I am here getting ready to do an interview I've been looking forward to doing over the last couple of weeks. Well, actually, it's probably been about a month. And uh, as many of you know, we recently did a story about abortion. And uh, at, the Dream Cruise, at the Dream Cruise, there was a bunch of people out there with signs and everything trying to raise the awareness of abortion. And I have today with me a gentleman by the name of Jeremy who have an awesome testimony about what could have happened but didn't happen and how, you know, Christ has transformed his life and the way he think now is totally different than the way he, he thought before. So uh, I just want to introduce you all to a very powerful brother who uh, have an awesome story that I feel is appropriate to share with all 10 of you. You know, I only got 10, 10 viewers, so all 10 of you should be blessed by this good news that this brother has to have, uh, has to offer. So uh, with no further ado, I just want to show you all my man Jeremy. What's up, Jeremy? Welcome hey, to the hey, show. Hey, what's up, T? What's going on? What's That's, going on, man? Let's move while we change that camera around. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, a lot of people have been talking about my shaky camera work, so I'm trying to you know, tighten up my game a little bit when I got a chance. But, uh, brother, just tell me a little bit about um, your whole story, this whole piece that we're getting ready to do on abortion. All right, well, praise God, man. First of all, you know, I don't know if I deserve all that introduction that, that the brother bestowed on me, but it's all right. Um, I'll just tell you the story, man, the way I try to tell it, man. You know, first of all, with Christ being involved in anybody's life, man, Christ is the, the motivating factor. I mean, he's the, the X factor that changes a person's life or... Um, gets a person to see just how the path they were on beforehand, before they met Christ, and then after they meet Christ, and how he just really changes things around, man. I guess I'll just get into the story. It was, you know, about 15 years ago, I was in college, and my girlfriend at the time came to me, told me she was pregnant, and I was just like, okay, well, you know, I didn't want to take responsibility for that. I was like, well, what you going to do about that? You know, I uh, broke up with her and everything, but we got back together, but it was just like, man, you know, I'm not trying to have no baby. You know, we can get rid of this baby. Can't do that. And um, we got as far as the abortion clinic, man, because she was leaving everything up to me. You know, and I was just like, well, that's that's an easy choice right there. Got to the abortion clinic, and um, I was out in the lobby watching Jerry Springer. And uh, 15 minutes later, she came out from the back from the abortion clinic. And I'm thinking, okay, well, cool. We, that abortion was done in 15 minutes. I'm straight. I ain't got to worry about no babies, no no money, no wake me up at 2 o'clock in the morning, none of that stuff. You know, I'm in school, I'm trying to finish up my college degree. After this, I want to go on and do my Steven Spielberg thing because I was in college studying movies. Um, but lo and behold, she came out and she was crying, man. She had the doctor with her and everything. And it was just like the Holy Spirit just hit me all of a sudden and just tears just started flowing from my face. And it was just like, what am I about to do here? You know, I knew better than that. You know, I was raised in church or in and out of church at least. And so I knew better than to take, to, uh, if you take a child's life, I don't care what nobody call it, man. You put a, a metal object through somebody's skull or off their nose or whatever and yank out their brain, that's murder. I don't care if they be inside the womb or not. Um, so anyway, you know, now my daughter is 14 years old. I'm really proud of her. You know, we were about to abort her and she knows the story. And, you know, I'm really proud of her because, you know, she's a humble young lady. You know, she's a, a good young lady. I, I wouldn't even say an exceptional young child. You know, she uh, has the typical teenager problems, but at the same time, she was the valedictorian of her fifth grade class, recently graduated valedictorian of her eighth grade class. She's going on to Cranbrook in the fall time, got a full scholarship. Uh, they offered her, you know, uh, Cranbrook, what, $35,000 a year. So my, my pockets just ain't that deep, you know what I mean? So uh, <laughs> right, right. I, I bless the Lord for that because what, that could have been something totally different. You know, at the time I was looking at her as a problem, now I'm looking at her as a blessing. You know, so many people tell me, oh, you got a great daughter, you got a great daughter, and it's cool. But, you know, what I like about it most is that she's humble and she tries to keep God first. I'm training her to be a young woman of God. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Uh, all the academic stuff is great. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased with that. But, you know, besides just that, I want her to be to be uh, a challenge to be a, a, a woman of uh, integrity, a woman who has high moral standards, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, that's my thing, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. <laughs> that's good, bro. That's good. Hey, man, so, that's a... That's an awesome, awesome story, man. And uh, I feel a lot of people are going to be blessed by it. Um, but if you can say one thing to somebody who, who's actually thinking about getting abortion, uh, an abortion, they say, you know, now is not the time. I'm too young. I want to finish school. I got a lot of goals that I want to have. Um, you know, it's all about me. It's all about me. What would you say to a person who's stuck in that situation and actually thinking about getting an abortion right now? Man, I would definitely say uh, rethink it. You know, think about the fact that you could have been aborted. You know, since what, 1972, Roe versus Wade has been out. You know, so all of us at any given time could have been aborted. 
And it's like if you look at the history of abortion uh, in the 1800s, women were trying not to get abortions. You know, they say, well, you know, men are trying to make us get abortions because these men are having affairs and they're trying to hide their affairs. So they make the women that they're having an affair with get an abortion. And so it was a woman's right. And they said, no, no abortions. Then that flip-flopped in the 1900s. It became a woman's right again. Now it's like the men said, no, don't have abortions. They said, no, we want abortions. So it was like there's just a, a big spirit of rebellion, man, uh, in our society. And it's working not just in, you know, in women, but in men too, in all of us. And uh, that's a child's life, man. That's a human life that you're carrying. Not just that. I mean, go to God about that. What does God think about it? Forget what the politicians say. Forget what the organizations say and the social organizations, et cetera, et cetera. Forget what your own conscience may even, may even feel. You may be able to say, hey, well, I can get rid of this baby and everything can be all right. But can I tell the other, other part of my story real quick, T? Nah, I can't. Not enough time. Okay, but... We have maybe another show, man. Another we got show. like okay. seven, seven seconds left, so... All right, man. I would just say... Give it to Christ. Pray about it and, and listen to the Lord. He's going to tell you that ain't the right move to make. All right, y'all. This is uh, Tomashi on the Vision there and my man Jeremy. Say peace. Peace. God bless. And uh, I appreciate y'all for, for, for looking at the show and supporting. I'm hearing all your feedback. Every time you send me something, I get it. It's only 10 of y'all. So okay. you know I, I'm listening. So uh, I try to do a fade to black, but it's ended up going to be a fade to red because my, I'm light-skinned and the sun is out. So... Grace and peace. Fade the red.